I need your permission to have a conversation with you like family. Yes. Is, is that okay? Yes. yes. Then, otherwise, I'd yank off the tie, but I'll be <laughs> tie But we'll be family. Here, here's the other thing I need. I need you, for the next 15 minutes, to give yourself permission to be amazing. Can you do that? Yes. So then I'll start right now with this question. How many of you have already given yourselves permission to be amazing? I have. I have. And so since we're family, and family can be arrogant with one another, right? <laughs> so let me give you the other Zoe. Okay, there's Alonzo, the horrible guy, and I appreciated the intro, and then there's Zoe, family. Here, here's family. So what makes me so honored that Vanessa invited me to be a part of this, thank you, I cannot thank you enough, is let's just agree that there is no good or bad except in comparison. There is no good or bad except in comparison. So I'm amazing until I start comparing myself to somebody who all of a sudden I think is more amazing. But then if I'm honest with myself, I'll find another million people who wish they were me. Right? Yes. Is that not a headache? Yes. <laughs> Do any of you want to spend the rest of your life doing this, I'm better than, but somebody doesn't have what I have kind of stuff, right? So you know what people walk like when they've given themselves permission to be amazing? They walk through the room like this, with their head up. Do you think I really give a rip what anybody's thinking about me when I walk through a room? I've already given myself permission. A long time ago, a long time ago, this is not Oprah, we're not going to cry up in here. <laughs> but, but we'll be family. I'll give you this whole story in like 30 seconds. Nine foster homes in 10 years. The next year, my mom decides, maybe Detroit's not for me. She sends me to Wisconsin. I've been here alone since I was 13. I have all kinds of reasons why I shouldn't be amazing. But those are my reasons. They're not better than yours. They're not worse than yours. They're mine. And I am not sharing them with you. <laughs> you have your own, right? You have your own. And then, you know, when you're growing up on the block, and you, I start thinking about, you know what? I want what he has. And I want what she has. And I want what they have. They got to be too difficult for me. It's hard to keep up with the Joneses and the Murphys. I know more than the Joneses, right? It's hard to keep up with that. And then my mom said to me something one day. She said, she said, man, one day you are going to understand this. But it's going to be my answer to you every time I ask you to do something and it didn't get done. Her answer is going to be, I can't help that. So she would, she would wake me up at, you know, 6 in the morning. Man, go cut the grass. We cut grass in Detroit. Is this a lawn? Okay, anyway, cut the grass. No, that's six in the morning. It's cool in the morning, right? What do I do? I wait. I wait. My mom would be home. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, she's going to let me get away with this. <laughs> she's going to let me get away with not cutting the grass. Now, what's the hottest time of the day? Who said noon? It's like three o'clock. She would come over and get me. It's time for you to go cut the grass. Now, mama, it's 200 degrees outside. Can't help that. <laughs> right? My mom stood on her feet for 35 years at a &P grocery store to put me through school. 35 years. I think sometimes human beings, we struggle with time and distance. Do you know how long 35 years is to be doing this? Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Maybe you mean it. Have a nice day. <laughs> 35 years. She would wake me up and say, ma'am, I need you to do the dishes. Okay, mama, I would put it off, put it off, put it off. she wait till 2 in the morning. <laughs> hey, man, time to do the dishes. Mama, it's 2 in the morning. Help me out. <laughs> I can't help that. I can't help that. This was suddenly dawned on me one day. For the rest of my life, life's answer to me would be, I can't help that. I can't help that. So here's what I decided, because there are things I want for me that I'm sure are no different than you want for you. There are some things I think I deserve, not because it's owed to me, but because I'm breathing. 
<laughs> I deserve it. I deserve it. But the only way for me to get the things that I thought I deserved, it was this most simple solution. I cannot believe what is recorded. Okay, people are paying me and they deserve to pay me for this. But <laughs> you know the solution? Show up. Show up. Anybody that has ever done anything amazing in their life showed up. Nothing happens on this planet that we're aware of by people who do not show up. The world is run by people who show up. You showed up. There is no good or bad except in comparison, but I do know what an empty seat means. Somebody decided not to show up. So guess who's running things and who's not? You are. And you will be. And you will continue to do that. You will continue to do that. All of which is not in isolation. You gave yourself permission to be amazing. So you got out of bed and you got here. You showed up. When I was in um, first grade in Detroit Public School, I had a friend in my house. You will not find a single diploma friend in my house. You know what's friend in my house? It's a letter from grade school with them flunking me in first grade, <laughs> saying to my mom that in our professional opinion, this young man will not be able to keep up with everybody else around him. We highly recommend you consider putting him in the special classes. I love all God's people, and me and special people get along, but that was, <laughs> that was foul. That was foul. So my mom pulled me out of that school. She pulled me out of that school. She said, man, everybody for the rest of your life is going to have an opinion on what you're capable of. For the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. So she put me on a bus and had me bus to, to the um, Polish community where she forgot to read the fine print um, that you had to be Catholic and you had to speak Polish. <laughs> I was getting my butt beat every day in the hood speaking Polish, but it's all good. That makes me amazing, right? <laughs> If I said to you, guess which language is my second language? None of you would have said Polish. <laughs> None of you would have said that, right? So then I thought, you know what, Mama, I can do this. All I got to do is show up. All I got to do is show up. And then I want to go to college. And then we have people around us in life that have something to say about you since you've given yourself permission to be amazing. It's not my fault. I am not going to own it that they have not given themselves permission yet. They'll be comparing themselves to me later, but that's a different conversation. Right? So I can do this college thing, I just got to show up. I just got to show up. That's it. And then I noticed everybody around me, were, they were going on to get a graduate degree. You know, Mr. First Grade flunked class, right? Well, Mama, I'm a big fan of numbers. Um, do we go to graduate school? I can't believe I asked that question. I am so embarrassed that I asked that question. Do we go to graduate school? What? Well, you know what? You go, I go. <laughs> you go get a master's degree in public administration. I'm not sure what that is, but with the Scooby-Doo kick, I'm going too. <laughs> <laughs> and then halfway through, and, and so at, at Oshkosh at the time, you could only get your um, public administration degree on a Saturday. There were no weekdays. So let me get this straight. I got to give up two and a half years of my life every Saturday to get this degree? You go, I go. I can't tell you a single thing I missed in two years. I do not have a single regret. Maybe I missed a basketball game live, whatever. They weren't thinking about me anyway. So then I get this public administration degree, and then I look around me, and everybody's like, you know, Alonzo, we're all going to get a master's in HR because HR runs people and they get to hire and fire people. Well, you know what? I'm allergic to getting fired. So maybe, maybe I need a master's degree in that too and everybody has something to say about that. I had already given myself permission. So all I had to do was show up. So I showed up. Why are you here? You already have a master's degree because I want one. <laughs> you got one, I get one. <laughs> I am 39 years old. I have never not been a student. 
and my best double negatives for the teachers in the room. Never not. <laughs> so halfway through the HR program, everybody's getting an MBA. And I look at me on paper. I don't have one of those. <laughs> what do you know that I do not? I think I want one too. All I got to do is show up. I call Concordia and put them out there like that. And I like it. But look, I do not need this. I want this. But if you cannot give this to me in less than a year, I will find somebody who will. When you've given yourself permission to be amazing, so when you've truly given yourself permission to amazing, there is nothing you want that you will not ask for or demand. You know what stops you from doing that? Pride. Pride says, I shouldn't call that college and tell them I want a master's degree in 10 months. Because they might not understand it, and who am I, right? But they missed the memo that this dude already gave himself permission. 10 months, I want it. Let me worry about showing up. Showed up. Showed up. These are my miraculous words of wisdom to you. To you. We have, we have, um, examples in the space I'm in now, entrepreneurial spirit, right? 80% um, of all new businesses fail in the first year. And it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. Never mind the school thing. How about we just talk about everyday thing? You are looking at a person who unapologetically goes after things like his life depends on. Not his pride. I have given up on going after things with my pride on the line a long time ago. Because something about pride makes you think, you know, I really want to talk to this group, but maybe I'm not the best public speaker. And your ego says, man, don't you go in front of that group? Right? Your, your, your pride keeps you safe. Your pride says, you know, that could be embarrassing, or that could lead to people talking about you, and God forbid you should lose a friend or two, and family. Pride says you can't do that. Meanwhile, life says if you want to survive, I do not care what they think. 80% of people go after their business with their pride on the line. 80% of the people in class with you go to class with their pride on the line. Not you, though, because you show up. You show up. When I interviewed, um, let me, I didn't even really interview for the job. I can officially talk about it now. When I was at Children's Hospital, um, I got a call from uh, Wells Fargo Funds Management Group. And they said, we would like for you to be the senior vice president, head of shared services in our mutual fund business. I have worked in juvenile corrections, long-term care, pediatric health care. Never once did I think I was going to wake up and work in the investment field. I was 33. But I'd like to think I'm pretty amazing. So I said, OK, you bet on me like I bet on you. Because remember, I didn't apply for this. Short version. I get a fax at work, 33. Here's $165,000. Here's 35% base pay bonus, or bonus. Here's six weeks of vacation and 100% tuition reimbursement. Oh, um, yeah. Never learned mutual funds. Guess what I'm learning? <laughs> Guess what I'm learning? All I got to do show is show up. That is all I got to do. I am so, I, I, am, I'm, I am allergic to complicated stuff, family. I break out in bad rashes around drama. It's just, I can't do it. I have an inhaler for that. I'm not asthmatic, but just... People who are worried about pride and what other people think, just, it slows me down. It will slow you down. I am going to judge you. I, on behalf of the 7 billion people on the planet, are going to judge you for the rest of your life. I have something to say about everything you do for the rest of your life. I know you'd like to think that maybe at some point I'll let up, but this, that's where the tag team comes in. Because when I get tired, I find somebody else to help me out, to judge you. So at some point, maybe it should just not be about what we think. What, what do you think? <laughs> right? At some point, at some 
point, that will be exhausting to you. Now, here's my selfish plea. I am a father of two, and you did not sign up for this, but welcome to the game. My children, your children, all of our children, listen with their eyes and not with their ears. I think people forget that sometimes. There's a cool trick. That's why very rarely do I have a PowerPoint presentation. Because if I'm standing over here talking to you, there's a pretty cool thing up there, and you're looking over there and I'm talking over here, you hear me, but you are not listening to me. You're listening to this. So, if you do not show up, my kids think it's okay not to show up. You didn't sign up for that, but I hold you responsible for that. If you do not show up because life got in the way, my children are going to think they do not have to show up because life happened to them too. I need you. I am pleading with you now. I need you for the rest of your life to continue to give yourself permission and continue to show up. That's it. I just need you to show up. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I just, I just need you to show up. So now here's a couple a word trick and then I'll be done for a minute. Do you, if I told you that your brain cannot understand 80% of the words, probably 90, that you use, would you believe me? That we use words all the time, and our brain has no idea what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> so, back on my selfish box, I'm going to challenge you for the rest of this day to not use two words. And if you're up for showing up, you will just not use them ever again. But just give me a day. All right? How many of you have ever tried to do something? I'm a little nervous. <laughs> You've all tried to do something, right? Yes. And then when it didn't go your way, what'd you do? You tried again, right? So, on the count of three, what I'd like everybody to do is try to stand up. Ready? On the count of three, try to stand up. One, two, three. Okay, now sit back down and listen very carefully to my instructions. On the count of three, I would like for you to try to stand up. Just try. One, two, three. <laughs> You're not sure what to do, are you? You have no idea what to do. Here's what showing up gets you, and here's what finding life reasons to not show up gets you. For the rest of your life, you will have an advantage over everybody else on something they didn't even understand. <laughs> Here's how your brain works. Your brain only understands affirmation. It only responds to a committed instruction. If you look up the word try in the dictionary, buried deep inside, you will find a line that says, pre-supposed to failure. Do any of you try to do anything within the back of your mind saying, this is not going to work. Not on the things that your life depends on it. If I'm underwater, I do not try to get a breath, breath of fresh air. I commit to it. If I said to you that none of you try to graduate from here, does that make sense? Yes. You did. You did. Let me borrow $100 and I'll try to pay you back. <laughs> oh, we talk money, now everybody understands. <laughs> right? You would never let me try to pay you back on the debt any more than you should try to give yourself permission to be amazing. Show up. Do not try to show up. Show up. Here's the other one. Don't. D-O-N apostrophe T. How many of us have things we say we don't do? Once again, I'm nervous that there are no hands going up. Okay, so everybody in here does. Or you're not sure if you should raise your hand or not. I get it. Okay. So here's the word don't. In the dictionary, uh, means um, you do not. It's a non-negotiable. If I say I don't do it, I don't do it. Whatever that means. But now here's where the brain goes. The brain says, okay, I think I'll, I'll do what I think you mean, 
And then I'll leave it to you to correct me. Right? So, on the count of three, don't think about where you parked your car. One, two, <laughs> Wait, I thought it was a, a non-negotiable. Okay, now that you know where I'm going with this, let's be serious. Okay, serious. Let's talk serious. Don't think about your home address. <laughs> Don't open the front door to your house and see the first picture hanging on the wall. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. <laughs> when you're at McDonald's and you hear a mom talking to her child and she says, no, no, Susie, we don't play like that. When does she say that? I was already playing like that. <laughs> now, now, Johnny, we don't talk like that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> or you wouldn't have said it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Do any of you have friends that say things like, don't mess with me? <laughs> when do they say that? <laughs> I'm already messing with you. Gangster? <laughs> right? Here's one of my all-time favorites. Don't try me. What? Well, let's see, there is no try, and you're saying it after the fact, which pretty much means I have no idea what you're talking about, so I'm going to keep doing it. Fake gangster. <laughs> right? So would it make sense to you that for the rest of the day, if you allow me to, I give you permission not to try to do anything? For the rest of the day, I give you permission not to try to do anything. But here's what that means. Here's how Alonzo goes about his day. Everything that happened to me happened on purpose. And everything that did not happen to me happened on purpose. Make sense? Yes. If I'm late to a meeting, I didn't try to get there on time. <laughs> I intended to be late. <coughs> That's how I go about it. If somebody owes me money, they did not try to pay me back on Friday. If I do not have the money on Friday, they intended not to give me the money back on Friday. Welcome to my world. Doesn't mean I do not loan money, it just means, okay, here's the, here's the agreement. You are going to be challenged. You are already challenged to try to do stuff today and tomorrow, try to get the laundry done, try to get your homework done, try to feed your kids on time, try to do all these things. You can't do it. You can't try to wave. You can't try to stand up. Commit to it. One way or the other, I love you both ways. I love you both ways. I just find it to be incredibly disrespectful to you and me if you tell me something that you can't demonstrate because I listen with my eyes. So that's it. Family, that, that's my talk. I know two weeks from now, somebody's going to say, hey, how was that student leadership conference? It was pretty cool. It was a good looking ball group. I know you're talking about me. Uh, no, I did say I've given myself permission to love me some me. I'm not thinking about you thinking I'm arrogant. Anyway. <laughs> so, and they'll say, well, what did they talk about? And what did he say? Show up. Really? What did that mean? You should have been there. You <laughs> should have showed up. The people who get the jobs are the people who show up. The people who get promoted are the people who show up. The people who graduate are the people who show up. The people who get the best grades who show up. The people in the best relationships are the people who show up. <laughs>
You have so many reasons not to show up, and you do it anyway. During the tide, all boats will rise, right? I need you for me and you and my children to continue to show up. My contact information is on there. This is not a coaching thing or I'm not selling you thing. If you need me, if you need me, show up. <laughs> Call me, write me, Skype me, note on a pigeon foot. Um, I do not read smoke signal, but I can, you know what? If you learn it, I'm learning. You should see me with golf clubs. You know how much business gets done on a golf course? What? You going golfing? I'm going golfing. <laughs> That's, that's just me. So from the bottom of my heart, I am so in awe of you. And again, Vanessa, I cannot thank you enough for this honor to introduce myself to all of you. Whatever you need that I can provide, you're talking to a person who will not overcommit. If I can do it, I will do it. If you hear me say, I'll try to get that done, and you let me off the phone, that's your fault. <laughs> I'm not owning that that you let me get away with that. Deal? Yeah. Alright, thank you everybody.